Hello everyone, welcome to chapter one. Today we are going to go over the tools you will need to complete the exercises for the homework for chapter one. I'm going to do something similar for every chapter. I'm going to leave it up to you to read the chapters, uh, process the material, learn the theory within the book, and then through these videos I'm going to show you how to solve the problems at the end of each chapter uh, that you will do for homework uh, using Microsoft Excel. The book is Excel based and has some excellent instruction on how to use Excel. You could probably do all these problems without my help, but I'm going to help you out and show you some shortcuts and let you see how, how the problems are going to come together on an actual Excel sheet. Okay, so first thing we're going to do is talk about percentages. We're going to cover basic uh, percentage calculations. So if we had any given number and want to calculate a percentage of that number. So I'm going to pick a cell in the middle of the worksheet here. And I'm going to pick uh, a number that makes this very easy. I'm going to type in 100. Now I need to figure out the percentage. Uh, what's 25% of 100? Let's use that as an example. So how I'm going to calculate that, and we all know the answer is 25. 25% of 100 is 25. So I'm going to do equal sign. 0.25 times, which is uh, either what Control 8 or Shift 8, depending on your keyboard, or the uh, if you have a numbers pad, uh, there's a, a multiplication sign, which is just an asterisk there for you. Uh, and we're going to multiply times this cell times F6. You can click on F6 or you can type in F6. I hit Enter. We get 25. Now if I want to find a more complex number where we don't know the answer necessarily ahead of time, let's pick 1,589,612. And if I want to know what 25% of that is, all I have to do is hit return because this formula is still in there, 0.25 times F6. So 25% of 1,589,612 is 397,403. So that's how you calculate a basic percentage. Next thing we're going to talk about is how to work with a data set, how to find percentages with a data set. And one of the things we're going to have to do with, with this book is we're going to, the book comes with data sets. The CD you all received with the book has the data sets that the book will often refer to on the CD. Delete those two. Well, so I want to show you how to bring up those data sets. Before I do, I want to offer a quick reminder, please go through all of the Excel instruction in Chapter 1. It talks about the, the CD and about the book and how to find things and how some of the basics work. It's very important you do that now, even though it may seem like you know all of that stuff, and most of you do, most for what I'm doing here for most of you is, is incredibly remedial. Uh, I'm going over it just in case not everybody has seen it before. I am also uh, want to make sure that we're all on the same page as we, as we start out. So I'm going to go access the, the CD, which is already in my computer. And I'm going to go to uh, Appendix B Data Sets. Okay, I'm going to pull the Excel data sets. Now here's where it gets a little tricky. In the text it will often refer to uh, numbered data sets. And for my computer I've not been able to get the, the CD to load up in such a way that I could uh, that it would allow me to choose between numbered data sets. I've not found, figured out how to do that. I don't even know if it will do that. But what I have found is the data sets typically have a word clue in the problem that is, allows you to know which data set is being referred to. So in the homework for chapter one, uh, problem seven, uh, they refer to movies. Well, we go to the movies data set right here. It also says data set nine. Well, it's more than the ninth one down, so I'm not exactly sure how they're numbered, but uh, in every case that, that I assign a data set out of the book, there's a clue as to know how to know which one it is. And we're not going to use these data sets all the time. It's not necessary. But in this particular case, that's how you do it. So I click on Movies, and it pulls up the data. And what this simply is, are you get, we get the title, the rating, the budget, the gross, the length, and uh, the rating for somewhere else. Uh, I guess this is the quality, the rating quality. Um, yeah. Well, yeah, we can tell it's the rating quality because if we look at 
the high quality films, we look at something like Aviator or uh, Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire, we get 7.8 or an 8.4 for Million Dollar Baby, which won Oscars. And then we look at the lower ones, like a 1.9 for from Justin to Kelly. So I'm guessing these are critic ratings here. Either way, that's not really important for this course. What we want to figure out, according to the problem, the homework problem is how many of these are R ratings. Well, the book counts them for you in the problem. Uh, and that's fine, and, and it's going to be very easy for you to solve that just using those. But I'm going to get, show you a few tips on how to uh, solve these uh, quickly, even if you don't have the numbers given to you as they're given to you in the problem. So what we're going to do is figure out what percentage of these films are PG. Actually, let's do PG-13. No, well, no, we'll do PG. We'll do PG films. And so the logical thing to do would be to go over to the rating here and count one, two, did I miss one? One, two, three of them are PG. And if we want to know how many there are, I look over here and I, we start in row two and we end in 36, which means there's 35 rows. So what's th uh, three out of 35 will give us our percentage, which is a little over 8%. Well, that's how most people will do it. But imagine that this list were not 35 items. Imagine it was 14,000 items. And imagine if there weren't three PGs, but there were um, 3,500 PGs. Well, you don't want to do any of that by hand. So you want to know how to do these things. Let Excel calculate it for you. And so that's what I'm going to show you how to do, because I not only want you to know how to solve the problems in the book, but I want you to know how to use these tools in the workplace. So what I'm going to do is we're going to have to find a way to have Excel tell us which of these, uh, how many PGs there are. Well, there's quite a few ways to do this. And many of you will watch the way I do it and say, oh, no, there's an easier way. And there probably are easier ways. Uh, I could probably do it three different, four different ways. But I'm going to do it the way that um, it, it can be applied to most other situations. So we're going to start and use a basic Excel if statement. So I'm going to tell Excel equal sign if, open parentheses, I'm going to zoom in on this a little bit. Oops. I'm going to erase that. And I'm going to zoom in so that you guys can see a little bit better. In case you're watching this on something small, maybe you guys are watching this on your phone. So I'm going to do a basic if statement equals if. And the first thing I'm going to do in an if statement is, uh, click on the cell with which I'm going to be referring, which is the rating. So if cell B2 equals, and we're going to do a text uh, symbol here, so we're going to, we're referring to text, we're going to need to use quotation marks. If cell 2 equals PG, close quotation marks, comma, if, cell, if B2 equals PG, then we're going to have it put a number 1 in this cell. So I put comma 1. And then I put, what if it doesn't equal PG? Then I'm going to have it put a 0 close parentheses. So if B2 equals parentheses, I'm not parentheses, quotation mark PG, per, quotation mark comma 1, comma 0, close parentheses. I'm sorry if I confuse parentheses and quotation marks there, but you see what I did. Uh, now I will hit enter and it will give me a 0 because there's an R over here. So all I do for all of these is I simply drag it down drag it down to the bottom, and it will put a number 1 next to the PG. So now all I have to do is total up this column. And we have this neat little auto sum button up here. Uh, you could also type this in. You do just do equal sign sum, open parentheses, give the range, close parentheses. But auto sum even guessed right, and I'm checking by this little dotted line, which cells I wanted to sum. So we will let it. I hit enter and it gives me three. Now I'm going to do it manually just so you see how that's done. Equals, sum, open parentheses, highlight them, close parentheses, enter, we still get the three. Now we also need to know how many of these there are. Of course we know there's 35, but I'm going to go ahead and calculate it anyway. I'm going to show you how to do that. I'm going to do equals, count. It's going to count how many rows have values. Open parentheses, make sure not to include the three because that's not one of the one of the films. 
We go up there, highlight all of them, close parentheses, enter, it gives us the 35. Now to calculate the percentage, all I'm going to do is equal sign, just like we did in the first example, 3 divided by 35, enter. Okay, it gives me 0 0.08571, which is, you know, a decimal to percentage, that's 8.57%. If I want to quickly turn it in to make it look like a percentage, I can highlight it and then go find the percentage mark. There it is right there. Click on the percentage and it goes to 9%. Now I, don't, I like some decimals in my percent, so I'm going to change that up. I right click, go to Format Cells, Percentage. I'm going to go two percentage uh, decimal places, click OK. And there we have 8.57% would be the answer to how many, the percentage of PGs. Now you're going to calculate all that for the R, uh, for the homework, but we're going to just do this for right now. And this brings up the question, how do I want you to submit your homework? The way I'd like to see it is uh, please give me an Excel sheet, please submit an Excel sheet and make it obvious as to what your answer is. I'd like the Excel sheet because I want to see how you did your work. And what I would love, it's not required, but it would be helpful, is if you highlighted your answer. So I just made my answer yellow there. So when I open up your file to grade it, I can see, okay, this is the answer, that's correct. Let's follow the formulas back, which I will do, and I'll follow the formulas and see how you did everything to make sure it is correct. All right, please email me with any questions, and we'll be back for Chapter 2.